the time I dreaded finally came. I had to move out of my current place and into a new one and needed to get three shrimp tanks to a new location about 15 minutes away. It also didn't help that I started the morning by spending 15 minutes talking to a camera without turning on the microphone. What a fantastic start. <laughs> anyway, let's get into how we're going to move these shrimp tanks. The unfortunate thing is that it's difficult to do no matter what because we're always going to be disrupting the ecosystem we've spent months or years creating. The key is figuring out how to minimize that disruption throughout the process, at least if we want to keep our tanks how they are. If you're okay with more or less starting over, then one way to move the tanks is to pull literally everything out, which is what I thought I would have to do initially. That process involves draining some of the water to put it into two different buckets, one for plants and one for animals. From there, you can pull out the plants and decor and put them in one bucket, after which it's easier to catch all the animals in the tank, although something like a coolie loach is still going to be tough to catch. Once the animals are out, you can drain the rest of the tank, remove the substrate if you want to change it, and then the tank should be light enough to lift safely. That's not what I decided to do here, mainly because trying to catch hundreds of shrimp sounded terrible. I was also hoping to preserve the substrate layers in the tank. You see, most of my tanks are kind of Wallstad-esque in that I don't clean the substrate so mulm can build up and replenish the nutrients in the substrate. Over time, plants, bacteria, fungi, and other microorganisms in the soil develop symbiotic relationships to help purify the water and keep the tank healthy. If I disturb that substrate, then the microbial organization that's happened during the years gets lost, and I could end up with an unstable tank at the end of all this. Disturbing the substrate can also cause another problem because it can release some microorganisms that are beneficial when trapped in the substrate, but can be harmful or cause disease in animals when they're exposed to them in the water column. So the question is, how can I move the tanks while minimizing substrate disturbances and protecting my animals? And how much disturbance is too much? I decided to test this by moving my two smaller five gallon tanks first to see how they did after a few days before deciding how to move the larger 20 gallon tank that I care about the most. As you'll see later, there were some successes along with some failures that we can all learn from. Instead of taking everything out of the tanks, I decided to try a different approach to preserve the ecosystems. That basically involved taking the heaters out, unplugging the filters, and then draining most of the water so there was just an inch or two left to keep the shrimp alive during the move. The more water I removed, the lighter the tank would be, and the more fresh water I could add when I got to the new location to dilute any dirty water. Removing too much water might leave some areas of the tank dry on the car ride over though and cause a lot of stress. Another key factor to make this move easier was to reduce the number of tanks to move, so I broke down my 10 gallon cherry shrimp tank and put those guys in with the other cherry shrimp in my 20 gallon so that they don't mix with my other Neocaridina and produce wild type babies. At this point, the tanks probably had a little less than a gallon of water, so we're about 15 pounds between that and the substrate, the plants, everything in them. This made it pretty easy to pick them up and move them to the car, all the while trying to avoid like sloshing the water around or flexing the tank too much. Because I really did not want these tanks to break, as you can imagine. That's one part in this learning process that I probably would have done differently. If you do try this, make sure to support the bottom of the tank really well. My way of moving them in my arms really wasn't the safest, so ideally this would be done with a flat piece of wood or some other surface to support all the corners of the tank and keep it from flexing. As you'll see, that's what I ended up doing with the larger tank. Anyway, I put the tanks on the floor in the back of my car, secured them by moving the seats back, briefly talked to the camera while the microphone was still off, and then drove the 15 minutes to the new place. If you take a look at the video, as you'll see, they're doing great, <laughs> flopping around, having a good time. From there, I quickly moved the tanks out of the car and positioned them on their new shelf. One thing I'm actually looking forward to after the move is having the tanks on this sturdier shelf that you can see, since I never quite trusted the old wireframe one. Aquariums are heavy, they've got live animals in them, and so taking that risk is not great, which is why I never loaded the shelves more than like half of what they recommended. Anyway, after putting the tanks on the shelf, I put the water I siphoned from the Caridina tank earlier back into that tank in hopes of preserving the ecosystem as much as possible. If you aren't already aware, Caridina, like crystal shrimp, tend to be more sensitive to change, so I was hoping to give them as similar of an environment as possible. That backfired a little bit, so I'll talk about why and what I should have done differently towards the end of the video. After that, I remineralized some RODI water for Neo Caridina and put that in the orange relay tank. From there, I left the tanks for three days to see how the parameters were, how the shrimp and other animals were acclimating, meant everything looked good. So I decided to move my 20 gallon in a very similar way. 
One key difference between this bigger tank and the others is that there were large, heavy rocks in the tank that could break the glass if they shifted during transit, so I had to remove these and had to disturb the substrate a bit. This did free up quite a bit of debris to dirty the water, so I was pretty worried as I was moving this overall. The water got very murky for probably 30 to 45 minutes. After removing the rocks, I did the same procedure of removing almost all the water to make it as easy as possible to move while providing the shrimp and fish just enough to stay wet. Since I managed to forget my siphon at the new place, I ended up using a container to get the water out and just had to check for shrimp every time uh, to make sure that I wasn't just dumping a bunch of shrimp out. From there, I just had to move the tank very carefully onto this waterproofed wooden board. Once it was on there, I could move the tank without worrying about flexing the glass or potentially breaking it. Moving it on and off the wooden board would be the only time where the tank wouldn't be well supported, and so that was where it was a little bit dangerous. And this is where everything went wrong. I'm just kidding, it worked out fine. We moved it to the board, then got the board into the back of a truck. Here, there are a couple of important details I want to mention. First, I put a jack under the board where it was hanging over the side of the seat, as you can see in this picture. Second, I moved the tank from the middle of the board toward the back of the board and seat, so the board wouldn't be as likely to tilt and fall over when I stopped. I learned what a terrible mistake I made by painting this wood with a waterproof sealant that was like sticky, since the tank really wanted to stay in the exact place I put it. So whenever I made an adjustment, it just sloshed the tank around quite a lot. So again, I was worried about it this whole time. Because of my concern, I don't have any footage of actually getting the tank into its new place because I wanted to hurry in and get it organized and get new water in it as soon as possible. The water in this tank just got way dirtier than the others since I removed the rocks and exposed a bunch of debris. I just got the tank in place and started filling it with new water immediately. Here, I used that bowl in the tank to pour water in so that the pouring wouldn't disturb the substrate. It just prevents any like strong force going directly down and spreads the water out more evenly. This is a really good idea anytime you're adding a lot of new water to a tank or if you're just filling up a brand new tank to avoid kicking up a bunch of dirt. To be clear, this method would work for short trips like my 20 minute drive, but probably isn't the best for like multi-hour trips. In addition, if you were having to move multiple hours away, you'd also need to consider aeration, uh, which is something I just didn't have to worry about here. So this is not necessarily a full how-to guide uh, depending on where you're actually moving. So I'm just gonna add a little bit more water to the tank. I mean, the shrimp seem to be doing well. The monos are, are one of them's over here, one of them's over here. Rabbit snail is doing okay. I, I'm seeing a few shrimp that have more of them on them, which is indicative of like lower water quality, which is to be expected after the substrate's been so stirred up. As a quick reminder, Scuderiella japonica and Monodiscus kumaki are small organisms that hang out on shrimp, often in their gills. They eat debris and other microorganisms that float by or get trapped in shrimp gills. Unhealthy water has more food available for them. And lastly, they are not parasites, despite what many people think. Check out our video on them for more information. Now back to the main video. What we should expect to see is in the next few weeks, as the water quality gets better, the substrate settles back in again, we should see any sign of Monotrysis kumaki start to disappear from the shrimp. And there'll always be a few hairs around, but it should be fewer than what we're currently seeing. It's a little hard to see in this footage, but after I got done filling up the tanks, I checked out the substrate and saw that at least some layering seemed to still be visible at the edge of the tank, indicating that some substrate structure might have been preserved through the move. That's the whole reason I was doing this, so that was good to see. Okay, <laughs> so it's been about three weeks since we moved all of these tanks. And I, I do want to do some maintenance, take care of them, maybe do some like rescaping of them. But my goal here initially was just to allow them to reestablish. While we were moving them, they were just changing water conditions, changing temperature, changing substrate conditions. Uh, and that was the big one because we threw up a lot of debris that was in the substrate when moving, when trying to keep the whole tank together. We siphoned most of the water that was there out and then had to replace it with new water. Of course, I tried to be careful, but the water still definitely got a little murky, uh, especially for this tank. Not so much for this one. I have trouble remembering how this one turned out, 
but this one in particular, it seemed like it just held together very well. I think part of that is just because there are so many rooted plants in here. Uh, all the hornwort is going crazy and like keeping the substrate together. So I, I believe that played a big part and was actually very helpful. Let's go ahead and talk about how each tank did with the transition because two of them did well and one of them did pretty poorly. Now, my five gallon orange really tank here is one of the ones that did pretty well. There were some small substrate disturbances, but I still see plenty of shrimp swimming around. They're doing well, the plants are doing well. There's not a bunch of debris kind of hanging out on the bottom. I do definitely want to trim back these plants so I can actually see all the shrimp that are in there, but uh, I'm seeing like buried shrimp. I'm seeing shrimp that are growing uh, and they seem to be very happy. The same is not true for this tank. So this tank is was my Caradina tank. There are only like five to seven of them left. I guess I did not do as much testing throughout this process. Like I was gone for about a week on a trip and so I wasn't able to look after them as much as I really should have. I did see that uh, I, there were a few deaths in one day and then another the second day. And then I realized that something was wrong, tested it, saw that nitrates were extremely high, potentially like 40 plus. Uh, it was very red on the API test. And so something went wrong here. I should have just done a full water change probably a few days after and that would have been much better than unfortunately losing quite a few of them. And one is buried, so hopefully this colony will bounce back, but this is all on me uh, and it's so really unfortunate because I like this tank, but we'll go ahead. Uh, hopefully it'll bounce back and we'll go from there. Now, this tank down here uh, was kind of like my show tank to some degree. <laughs> Obviously, I've never been a great aquascaper, but this is my original cherry shrimp tank that I've always really in, like enjoyed. Uh, it's a 20 gallon tank here. As you can see, I still haven't put the rocks back in that were in there before. Partly because, again, I'm just letting the substrate reestablish, letting everything happen naturally to come back. I was expecting to see some monodiscus kumaki or scuderiella japonica pop up uh, because we did throw up a lot of debris initially but i'm not really seeing many it may have been just too temporary for the uh, for the epibionts to actually take advantage of it or maybe i just don't understand their life cycle maybe it wasn't enough food for them throughout for just one day because we did fill this up with entirely new water i got as much of that debris out as possible and it really didn't stay cloudy uh, or dirty for very long it was probably maybe an hour overall i'm pretty happy with how this move worked overall what we've learned is that at least when moving a tank just for about like 15 minutes to an hour away, including the time from getting every tank into the car then driving over here, then getting each tank set up. It, each one was probably disturbed for about an hour or so. In that time, I, they, there was a bunch of debris that was thrown up. The water was really murky for almost every tank, again, aside from this uh, orange really tank. And I was pretty worried about them. Given time, at least two of them did quite well with out anything else. One of them, again, the Caradina tank, did have some issues. And unfortunately, quite a few of them died off, whether that is because of the low pH conditions or it just that just happens with some tanks uh, or possibly, again, this had the least rooted plants and that's going to have an impact on how well the substrate holds together. So it may have been just the most disturbed substrate. Overall, if I was to do this again, I think that the five gallons with just a little bit of water and everything else kept in them were pretty easy, pretty light to carry. The 20 gallon, I think worked well with having that board to carry it. Uh, I would definitely recommend using a different kind of paint just because this paint ended up being very sticky. And so it was a little bit difficult to maneuver the tank into a new position because once it did, it kind of just stuck on. Getting a surface where the tank might slide a little better would be far easier for the move. Overall, frankly, a lot easier than I thought it would be. Again, I thought I was going to have to tear down all these tanks and it turns out that wasn't really necessary. The only thing I would be more diligent about is testing uh, and doing water changes as needed. There's no excuse for the fact that I just kind of let this tank go and unfortunately didn't see any deaths. So I didn't worry about it and I absolutely should have. That does bring up an important point here, which is that 
these two tanks were pretty darn overgrown with plants. And I thought that would be enough to kind of help purify the water. But unfortunately, that does have an, a serious impact on the visibility on how well I can check on what, how the tank is doing. I just happened to see two shrimp that died right in this open area. And that was before I cleared away a lot of these plants. So they were right up against the glass and they just happened to be dying. That was what finally tipped me off, told me that I needed to do a water change and do some testing. And so basically, be more careful, do the tests. It, it does take some time, but it's much better than the situation I have now, which is just losing most of a colony of shrimp. Uh, hopefully will come back, but I don't know. There's unfortunately nothing I can do except move on and hopefully learn from my mistakes and be better about testing. I know it's something that I tend to avoid. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. If I don't see any deaths, don't worry about it. Uh, but especially in these overgrown tanks where it might be harder to see if any deaths are occurring, to check on the shrimp, it's just a really good idea to do some more thorough testing. So hopefully you found this interesting. Hopefully you don't ever have to move any shrimp tanks because it's still kind of an absolute pain. But if you do, you don't necessarily have to fish them all out, completely destroy the ecosystem that you built. Just be aware and think about how many rooted plants are in the tank to actually hold the substrate together. Consider doing more water changes, more frequent testing while you're doing it and trying to minimize the overall time and transit for each tank. I certainly know quite a few things I should have done better, but if you notice anything else, you have any tips and tricks to provide other people, then by all means, please leave those in the comments. I'll see if there are any ones that are really good. I will try to pin those. Uh, and hopefully we can continue to share this knowledge so we have fewer people making mistakes out there. Thanks again for watching and happy shrimping.